Good morning and welcome to Ask a Few Online. This is Chef Thomas. Today the topic is flatfish uh, fabrication. So I just brought uh, a wonderful flatfish for, from a Korean store. Uh, it was literally just floating around about 20 seconds ago. So a fantastic fresh fish. Uh, flatfish, first of all, we have to understand are built different than round fish. Now a flatfish has, in the evolution, has actually turned from a round fish to a flat position and the eye slowly uh, wandered actually up on the top side. Uh, the most common flat fish found in our restaurants nowadays are either flounders, halibut, or sole. And sole, there's different kinds of sole. There's lemon sole, or pepper sole, and so forth. So there is, uh, by region, different soles out there. Most of the flatfish you find in the restaurants are used for rather delicate cooking methods. So this is not a fillet you would put on the grill. Um, flatfish uh, have four uh, very, very equal on weight uh, fish fillets. Uh, so there's two on the bottom and two on top. And uh, these fish fillets are rather flat and long and, as I said, very delicate. So some classic cooking techniques we do with these flat fish um, fillets are in, in papillette where we actually um, we kind of roll them up and we poach them in a croissant or in a poaching liquid like a court bouillon or any other fish stock or fish, similar fish stock uh, liquid. So this would give us, uh, this would keep the delicate flavor of the fish. It would not uh, change the flavor of the uh, sole or of the flounder too much and it will actually consistently uh, give a nice um, big piece of protein which then cooks also evenly. Uh, also another technique is uh, frying or pan frying. So we can also coat this uh, fillet with uh, you know flour, uh, egg wash and then bread crumbs or cornflakes or anything like that and then quickly um, pan fry them or deep fry them to make them nice and crisp. It takes very, very uh, little time because the fillets are so thin that they steam very quickly, the crisp outside, and uh, they're cooked in seconds. So this is not something you want to do in bunches and in a lot of uh, in big fryers. You probably want to put this more on a, a la carte station or like really watch what you're doing. So we had poaching, we had the deep frying, now sautéing is uh, my favorite um, cooking technique for these flat fish fillets because I can actually season it, I can actually sauté it nicely, maybe in uh, coconut oil or in any other, uh, maybe in olive oil, and take the fillet out, use the font, the residue from the little bit of fish fillets in the, uh, in the sauce, make the sauce in a pan, uh, and then actually add the fillets back, finish them cooking right in there if they even need that or just uh, strain the sauce and um, put them on a plate. So we had sautéing, deep fat frying or pan frying, and uh, poaching for your fillets. So, well, let's look at this fish, which uh, we talked about too much already. I'm going to put some paper down because they were still bleeding. As I said, they are very fresh. I'll put this on the cutting board. So again, if you see something moving, those are just nerves. As you can see, this fish has been uh, cut through um, the uh, through the bones back here, and uh, therefore it's dead. So the other thing you can see right here are the eyes. Both of the eyes are on the top. The top side is camouflage. This is basically exactly where the fish would be. It would be in sand, half buried up in there. And then the other side, if I turn this over, is actually white. So makes sense. Doesn't have to be camouflage because he wouldn't see anything because there's no eye. The eye literally wandered over him. So this is your top side of the fish. So I'm just taking the um, smeary stuff down here because I don't want to cut myself when I start filleting this thing. So this is a flounder. Dover sole looks very similar. And we get right to it. 
both sides are handled the same way. Uh, we do not need to cut the fins. I see chefs do this sometimes, or they actually uh, cut into the fins to get the skin off easier, but uh, I will show the technique without it. And we have a, we have a question here. Uh, what kind of fish is that? that? That is a flounder. Yeah, Dover's sole uh, looks a little bit smaller, is darker, more grayish color. Um, and then we have a lemon sole, which is like a brickish brownish color with yellow spots in there. All right, so I have also brought uh, different uh, knives here. We have the regular chef knife, a santuco knife, and a boning knife. This is not a flexible boning knife, so this would be out. Um, the santuco open here and uh, with paper towels it's usually the easiest and I already cut into it that's not good There's the skin now. You can see I have the skin piece here. Still a little bit slippery. Oh, I'm having a hard time with this fish today. All right, I guess I have to show you a different technique because this is really not going the way. I would have usually done the skin first, but then also have never worked with a fish that fresh. So we're gonna do it the other way. Um, the bone runs right in the middle. So we're gonna actually cut the fillets out. So this is the alternative. We're gonna try it the other way one more time because I have, a, the fish has two sides. So, We're gonna actually be able to try this one more time to just take the skin off. Again, if you see some movement in the fish, don't be alarmed, it is dead. So, now I run my knife all the way down to the bones. I don't know if you can hear that. And now I am angling my knife and I put my fingers down there so I can see, or actually not see, I can feel where the bones are. Be very careful so you don't cut yourself. And I run my knife right along the bones. We don't want to cut in any of the intestines. We never want to do that with fish. Okay, so now for uh, sushi preparation, some chefs use these fins. We will not use those. Okay, so here's my first fillet, still skin on, so we're gonna, we're gonna uh, finish this off in a second here. Uh, turn this fish around. It's a little bit easier for me to work this way. It's also very important that you remember to always move your product around wherever it's more comfortable for you to work. This is why we should have a rather large uh, work area, especially when we debone things, when we uh, do butchering of any kind that's not meat or seafood. Always have a large, clean work surface. I can literally feel and see that fish still moving. 
again I don't think I've ever had that that fresh of a fish here we go all right so I'm gonna focus on these two fillets right now I'm gonna put this back here so these fillets still have the skin on traditionally with uh, flat fish we don't work with the skin on so now I'm gonna attempt this again this time a little bit easier I scraped off again the skin from from the flesh or the other way around actually yeah, I'm gonna turn this around so you can see this better if you can't hold on to it it's probably time for some more paper towel so I'm holding with the paper towel the skin I basically don't even move my knife I keep that on an angle and just pull the skin so the skin is completely clean this is exactly what we wanted to do before and the fillet is wonderful beautiful fillet here so again this would be a fillet and that's actually only a little bit of bones here we're gonna cut this piece out you can't keep the fins on especially if you do something battered um, if you do something sauteed these come off very easily just have to run your finger on there again some sushi chef used this and this would be your first fillet here and now the second one same thing one more time so you can see this very well we're gonna scrape a little bit be careful to not uh, cut into the skin hold on to the skin wiggle the skin keep the knife steady on an angle skin is completely clean no more fish on there no more meat on there your fillet cleaned up now there's a little bit piece here this is where your intestines were so this fillet gets rather skinny here uh, but you can still keep this because this is very uh, appropriate meat to cook with and if you put these two fillets aside uh, we have about the same size now you could trim this one but then you have lesser of uh, uh, you know uh, weight on it and and it's gonna look a little bit different so this was was one side of the fish uh, attempt this one more time to do this like um, the Dover sole maybe this scent works better so again I go back there to the thin what I do is I kind of uh, a cut and a scrape and what I want is really just the skin without any of the meat alright so this looks like I got a little bit more to hang on than before got my finger in there that's good one more paper I have to say with frozen fish this is much easier so there's definitely something about uh, fresh fish all right one more try so what I'm doing is I'm trying to get my finger under the skin wow this is really tough I'm gonna take my knife here See if I can loosen this up more. No, 
I can't do this with this. Okay, so we're going to do this the same way. I want to show you how the fillets look from the other side. So I know where my bone is, right in the middle. Run down my knife. All right. Here we go. So then I'm just going to make a decision if I go from the left or from the right side of the um, bones here. Again, if it's uncomfortable working like this, turn it around. What you want to avoid is that you cut into any of the uh, fillet meats too much. And we want to avoid that we cut in any of the awful meat there, any of the viscera, the innards. Alrighty, here we go. Third fillet. Third fillet, okay, now we're fourth. Now what can you do with the uh, fish, the leftover carcass? You can obviously use it for stock. That would be very good because we don't want to um, throw anything away. A white fish stock can be used for a sauce. You can also use the fish stock to make a poaching liquid for your papillettes. All right. So, cut this one off here. Okay, got some of the fins. So here is the other fillet. So what we have here is uh, the carcass. No meat on there anymore. So I did a pretty good job. I would not put liver, uh, stomach into, um, into your stock. So this would be cut out. Preferably, actually, you don't even want to put the, um, the uh, gills in there because uh, they're usually still filled with blood. So I want to cut this off. So this would be perfect for stock. And we have another question. Um, Chuck, why wouldn't you use a boning knife with that fish? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what is the okay. difference between a flexible and a non-flexible? Yeah, the, the question was, why not using a boning knife? I would have used a fish boning knife because it's flexible. Uh, the flexible boning knives, they help a lot more with, um, with going around the bones. Uh, this boning knife is not flexible enough. I prefer actually having a larger chef knife, which makes kind of no sense what I just said because that's not flexible either. Uh, it's just, I think, for training and for doing it so much, I always like the uh, rigid large chef knife. The flexible boning knives are really, really good for some of the fishes out there. Um, makes a lot of sense to use them. I see, obviously, people, they uh, fish on boats. They use very long, very skinny, uh, fish knives and they're very flexible and they literally just go and fillet that fish very very quickly plus to take the skin off with a sharp knife they don't wiggle it as, as we did okay I hope that uh, answers your question we're gonna clean up these fillets because I actually want to show you the end result of these two things or this this um, this fish so you can see the um, the size of all these fillets so again I'm gonna Go under here, hold on to the skin. The skin can also go into the stock pot to make a, f a fish stock. Uh, trim this blood off, nobody wants to eat that. 
And then last but not least, our fourth one, same way. And as you heard, there were a couple bones left. So this is from the fins. Cut those off. And this removes fairly easy with your fingers. All right, so I clean this up here. And what we have now, I want to show you this one more time with the whole fish. There's your whole fish. So we have four fillets. You know, they came right off here. And then uh, the other side, not uh, camouflaged, we got two more fillets out of here. So all in all, when you look at the fish and the fillets, you get about um, not all the way the same size, but very similar size and weight of meat of all four fillets. Um, the technique I was, asked, I was telling you before, the M. Papillot, which actually means uh, just rolled, would work actually where you just take the fillet and you roll it up like this. And this is actually how you would poach it. So this would be actually the technique of um, uh, and puppy yet where you just roll it. Most of the time you don't even have to hold it. Um, maybe uh, leeks, you can bind them and then poach them. That would be great too. But this was basically the one uh, technique for flatfish. We really cannot cut steaks out of these, uh, like with round fish, where we actually go um, straight through the backbone and um, we cut something out, which is also called a horseshoe cut. That only would work for a round fish. Uh, flatfish do have center cuts, but you would have to imagine a large, large halibut. Uh, halibut can become 60, 80 pounds. Uh, there's plenty of fillets in there. These are massive fishes. Um, these, these are the size of you know, a, hu a human. And um, you, can, uh, you can order these center cut fillets. You can get them also where they come from more from the fin side, where they're a little bit thinner. In particular situations in a restaurant, the individual fish are not cost effective because of all the waste and the labor. It, it took me a good 10 minutes to duck around with this fish now because I couldn't get the skin off the way I wanted. Um, Dovasol runs a little bit faster, but the fishes are very, very expensive. So most restaurants will probably opt out of the fresh fish or the whole fish, excuse me, the whole fish and will go to portion cuts. The portion cuts done per pound are maybe even a little bit uh, more expensive, but therefore I don't have all that waste, I don't have uh, the skin, I don't have the, the bones. So this is something you want to think about, especially with flatfish pr production. Um, Dovaso flounder, uh, it's a seasonal product, um, so this is, gets very expensive during the summer. The season was basically over in March. So uh, to get something fresh means to pay a lot of money. Uh, these were $12.99 a pound. Uh, so this, this was a massive, uh, this, this was a $30 fish we just filleted here. So be very careful when you buy these things. Be cost effective. If you know what you're going to be doing with the carcass of the fish, you want to make fish stock, buy the whole fish. If you only want the fillets, I would probably opt to go to the grocery store and buy the frozen product. Will there be a flavor difference? I'm pretty sure there will be. Will you be able to taste the difference? You might be. Will uh, most customers in, in restaurants probably would not know the difference between a, flesh, a fresh and a frozen fish, unfortunately. Um, so if you're in an area where there is a lot of fresh fish, good for you because it's probably cheaper. Uh, for us here in the Midwest, uh, fresh fish is all flown in, and uh, that can get costly for restaurants. Um, I hope you took something away from this class. 
If there's no other questions, I will be uh, online in the chat room in a couple seconds. So give me a couple minutes to wash my hands, otherwise my computer is going to be smelling like fish. Uh, again, I love Dover sole, I love uh, flounder, I love fl flat fish. They're easy to produce, just not for the grill. I would not put them on the grill. So um, play around with it. And uh, you should at least try it once or twice with a fresh fisherman then season it a little bit cheaper. And good luck to you. And anytime you have any questions, please email us or call us. Uh, we're here for you. And um, go on with some of the assessments. We're waiting for grading more and more and more. Uh, and we have a fantastic uh, new raffle out there for an iPad, so or iPad mini. So please check our web page out and uh, send us some of the assignments. Thank you so much for watching, and I see you soon. Goodbye.